Uh, there's no question that the water that surrounds Delmarva is vital. Can you imagine the ill effects of dealing with polluted and trash-ridden water? That's why ensuring its cleanliness is a must. And you can start at home. Yeah, something as simple as changing up how you wash your car can make all the difference in the world. Lisa Wool is the executive director of the Nanticoke Watershed Alliance. Thank you, Lisa, for being here this afternoon. Oh, thank you for having me. So first of all, let's talk about the Alliance. W what is it? What do you do? Um, we're actually an environmental nonprofit, and we work on the ground and educationally to do things to improve the Nanticoke River. It's really one of the last pristine waterways around here. It's still very wild. Hmm. So it's our role to really make sure we keep it that way. Why do you feel it's so important to keep the water clean? Oh, there's, you know, it's not only just crucial for drinking water, but also our way of life on Delmarva. I mean, our agriculture, our, a lot of people, you know, stay here or come here because of the wildlife, the fishing, that whole lifestyle of, you know, being able to catch your dinner and come home and cook it and, you know, sitting around the table with family with some blue crabs and yeah. Yeah. so it's really vital to our lifestyle. So for all of us who are watching, it, it really starts at home, doesn't it? It really does. Um, so a lot of what people don't realize is we think of pollution as being this tube from a factory going to the river, but really everything we do on the land affects the water. So if you have a leaky engine to your car, every time it rains, a little bit of that's getting washed in. And so it might not seem like a lot, but when you have 30,000 people each dripping a little bit of oil or each having some dog waste on their yard that kind of gets dissolved with each rainstorm, that first inch of rain almost creates like a slug of pollution that goes to the river as it kind of washes across your yards into the street and then out to storm drains or directly to the river. So does planting trees help? Yes, because um, what happens is the trees almost soak up. A large tree can actually hold 100 gallons of water. So part of the problem that we have is we've developed all of our areas to quickly get water away. Right. So what happens when it rains is everything's quickly getting away from your homes, your buildings, and so it creates kind of um, a flash flood in some areas, which can cause erosion, and you see the rivers look like chocolate milk. Yeah. So what we kind of ask people to do is set aside a little piece of property um, you know, it can be just a little 10 foot garden. Um, it's a low lying garden called a rain garden. And so you can um, collect water there. It can be a low spot on your yard or something like that. And so that we're not having all this water hit at one time. Oh. So it also helps replenish our groundwater, which is really important for wells and for our farming community. Let it filter naturally. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned washing our cars yes. and the way we wash our cars can really make a difference. The best thing to do is actually go to a car wash because they recycle the water and reuse it and clean it and it goes to the sewage treatment plant afterwards. Oh. Where um, the second best thing would be to do it on your grass so that the grass can soak up, you know, some of the detergents and things right. and kind of filter it out versus if you do it on the road or your driveway, it's going to wash right into the storm drain and a lot of our storm drains go right to creeks. So better on the grass. Yep. How about that? Now, honest, does cleaning up after my pet really make that much of a difference? It does. Dog waste actually has something like 10,000 times more bacteria than cow or horse or other herbivores. And because they eat meat, they have um, different worms and things also that can be a health, a right. human health concern. So when that bacteria and that, it's basically nutrients, it's nitrogen. So when that hits the water, it also can cause um, algal blooms. So you get these algae blooms because you're basically fertilizing the algae, right. making mm. it grow like crazy, and then that can actually cause fish kills. That's interesting. Now, my son has, has bought many old trucks and old cars, and mm -hmm. it never fails. They start dripping fluids, and, and I try to explain to him, that's not good mm -hmm. for our water, is it? Yes, I, I mean, I love the classic cars, mm -hmm. you know, the Fords and Chevys and yeah. especially. But, um, you know, it's really important that we make sure we take care of those drips and things, or even if you're laying a pad underneath where you know, there's some nice absorbent pads that just absorb oils and not waters and things like that. Because it really does, that stuff doesn't just go away. It slowly gets washed, you know, into the waterways. Hmm. What, what, you mentioned rain gardens. What is a designer ditch? Well, um, I actually moved down here from northern Delaware and I noticed there's a lot of roadside ditches. Right. And some of them look like people maybe scalp them with their weed whacker or different things. And really, a lot of these are wet weather streams. You know, they're dry, but when it rains, they're full of water. And so we came up with these different designs that you can actually landscape them like you would any other place on your land. And so you can plant them with different native plants. And what happens is 
when you just scalp them or you herbicide them, you actually cause the ground to be loose and then that soil kind of fills in oh, or right, kind of yeah. travels down versus if you plant it, the roots grow really deep and it actually helps take more of that water down to the groundwater and, and replenish maintain, it. Maintain the ditch. And we do ask though that people go in in the fall and kind of clear it out a little and maybe put that plant material, you know, just trim it up a little because otherwise you can clog your pipes and things. And, and the vertical garden? Oh, vertical gardens are really neat. You see them a lot, uh, a little bit more in city areas where you know, you can do some things with vines and it's basically just taking like a side of your house and training some vines up it. And some people even do it with vegetables, hmm. with lettuce and herbs and things. And it's another way that you're holding water back. So all these plants basically hold water and the more water we can absorb, the less we're kind of flash flooding our areas and, and carrying pollution into the waterways. So many simple solutions to what is a big problem around the world. Yes. So thank you for being here. Thank now, uh, something else that can be fun and useful is a rain barrel. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about a little bit about that. And you're going to show us one. Yes. Coming up next. Kind of looks a little like a garbage can, doesn't it? Well, it's not. This is a rain barrel, and it is so much more than just a rain barrel. You remember Lisa Wool? She uh, joined us this last segment. She's the executive director of the Nanaco Watershed Alliance. Thank you so much for bringing us a rain barrel. Why is this such a, a beneficial idea? Well, uh, there's two main reasons. Uh, one is that we're using less water that we're paying for and also that we're taking from groundwater, right. which is crucial to a lot of the farming community. They really need that groundwater to grow crops. Um, secondly, is that we're taking the runoff from our downspouts um, and capturing it in this. And so we're reducing the amount of water that hits our waterways when we get a lot of rain. So we're actually reducing erosion and we're reducing flash flooding if everyone has a little rain barrel. So is that what the, the, the pipe on your side yeah. is? So this actually, um, there's a lot of really cute rain barrels you can buy online now. And this is one of them. There's some that look like wicker, or all different things. And so this actually comes with a connector kit and it comes with a hole saw that you can attach to a, a drill. And so you cut this little hole in there and this screws on to the downspout. So it actually goes into the so downspout. It comes down, okay. And then what happens is when this fills up, it'll actually bypass this and just continue on down the downspout like it would normally would. Okay, so then let me ask you about this spigot on this side. What's this for? So that is actually where you can get your water from. So we suggest that you put this on a cinder block or two or some type of, um, uh, thing to raise it a little so right. you can get a little water pressure okay. and then you can either put a bucket underneath or you can attach a hose to it you can use it to you know wash your car water your plants right. all different things and is this a drain on the very bottom that's also you can use that you can put the spigot down there or you can use it to drain it um, we do suggest that every winter you empty it drain it um, right. put it upside down so it doesn't crack. Do I put anything inside like a filter, any gravel? Or no, and the nice thing water. about this is because it's all self-contained, you're not going to grow mosquitoes. Oh, So yes. you don't have to worry about growing mosquitoes or anything like that. You just follow the instructions and hook it up to your downspout. You've got my attention. Is it expensive? This guy was about $100. Okay. Um, there's a wide range. There's actually some that are huge 500 gallon ones that are more expensive. There's some that are much smaller. There's some that actually look like um, planter boxes. And so they're about this high and you can plant it. And this one actually, you can take the lid off, which right. I don't know if we can right now, but you can take this lid off, you flip it over and you can plant it with plants. And so you can have some really nice plants that kind of hang down. Oh, okay. And they don't require as much watering because they kind of have that evaporation coming up from the water below. Right. So it doesn't dry out as quickly. It, it, it's very much worth the meager investment for home and for all of the water around Delmarva, isn't it? Yes, and they, they really look, I mean, they've come out with some really nice looking ones that complement your house. It right. doesn't look like, you can use old barrels or old garbage cans, but if you're interested, there's also some really nice, all different colors that you can get that really look nice. They make them work out well. Lisa Wool, Executive Director of the Nanaco Watershed Thank Alliance. You. Thank you so much for talking to us this afternoon. This is great ideas. Now, if you would like to find out more about how you can make your home more river friendly, uh, there's a whole bunch of other steps as well that you can take. All you have to do is go to delmarvalife.com. You'll find a link there.